We do it. We do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. It started. I started a live video. Hello. <laughs> I love that you're singing. She's singing. Yes, I to am. the Instagram yeah. world out there. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, friends, I hope you are well. I am with my dear friend Aura, who hosts me so kindly in her sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. And uh, uh, we are really uh, very busy speaking a lot, exchanging a lot, especially about uh, the new book that Aura is writing that will be out on November 22. Huh? 11 22 Yeah. So. I was unable to read it because it's in editing, but we spoke about that and it's a topic I think that's going to be interesting for a lot of people regarding the actual situation that we are living since a couple of years. So you speak with no filter. You write with no filters in your book. Huh? No, no filter. Why write unless you can write what's in your heart? Yeah, but you, but you, know? you felt after the we did a, a live uh, some months ago, more than a year ago, about mm -hmm. your book, mindfulness, and in fact, after that book, you felt to go beyond, and and to go and the next step after being mindful, being present with our mind in what is going on, this is the next step when we are present, in fact, we see things that are beyond, that is individual, but also beyond the collective more clearly. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely, And yes. this new book is about where are we going? Yes, exactly. Do you know, as a mindfulness practitioner and having written books on mindfulness, which is the practice of being in the present moment with total awareness, mm. But your awareness could be different than my awareness. What you see, I might not see. And what sure. I see, you might not see. So I felt that this was a time, it was a very timely book to write about mindfulness, being present in the time of which we are in right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. because there is so much to be aware of. Yeah. I think for me, you know my position about that, I think at the collective, unconscious collective level, we created the situation to evolve our more spiritual mm -hmm. uh, human race. Mm -hmm. Meaning not spiritual like new age and thing, but meaning like people using more and more their brain to found solution to the situation they found themselves in, especially with what is going on everywhere in the world. So I think it's a big stimulator for us to discover new ways of thinking and, and, and dealing with what is going on. Yes, I mean, never in our lifetime have we experienced as a collective mm. a global situation that we were all experiencing at the same time. Mm -mm -mm. So if you look at just that alone, that the world has changed exponentially, and we're now in what is being called the new normal, but I'd like to know what that means mm -hmm. because again, what my definition or perception of new normal is it's different, different than, mine. than yours. For but sure. so as a collective, suddenly there's a major shift that has happened globally. And so it's going to shift our consciousness. It's going to either heighten our awareness even more or it's going to for some people bury their awareness mm. because it's too much it's for too, them too hard. exactly it's to too much for that. them to yeah. see exactly yeah. so we have a choice so me i see always that inside out and i have like the feeling that the trouble we see outside all these big things outside in the world is a reflection of a deep change in our cells in our flesh and in our dna Mm -hmm. and there are some wanted to interfere in this change of DNA but it's something that is going on and every time we see things differently we change our mind about something we discover something our DNA in our cell in our flesh are changing it's changing oh yes so it's interesting to see that it's when at the collective level of humanity there is this big push to change to evolve to mutate to evolve with new race but in the same time 
you have some entities who want to change the DNA, human DNA. You see, it's, yes, it's that. Yes, it's really interesting yes. because it goes together like to stimulate. No, we don't want that. No, oh, we're, it's, we're living in a time where one of the greatest threats to our humanity is our technology. Mm -hmm. So we know that the advanced technology that we have created, because it's man that creates this advanced technology, mm -hmm. It ups the game. It's a game changer. Yeah. So we now find ourselves where we're, you know, we're suddenly looking at what does our future really look like? Mm -hmm. Do you know when you hear things like the new world order? You know, I, mm -hmm. I, that might not be in everybody's awareness, but what does the new world really look like at a time when we are changing so quickly, when our technology is advancing so quickly? And we're looking at things like artificial intelligence. This is becoming in the lexicon. It's becoming in the sort of mainstream awareness of how we are changing so fast. Yeah. So we must be aware of these changes because they are right at our doorstep. Do you know? Yeah, and yeah. It's, a big, it's a big changing time. I, I call this time a time of a great awakening. That's how I view this time. Oh, yeah. It's probably something for, different for others, and I respect that. But I think it's a time where we really need to be aware of the changes that are happening right before our eyes. Yeah. And, and for me, I see this. It's, it's been a topic of my discussion since a couple of years. I see this from outside, like, because as me, for to translate what I feel on this subtle level, like my invisible side, you know, my essence. It's difficult to, to put words on these feelings that comes from that divine essence, I would say. I have the feeling that at the collective level, we have also to create, to find a new language. That is, in a way, in what they do with this you know, transgenera uh, transhumanism and all that. Yes. And, and these new worlds are modeling, also shaping our eventual future. Yes, exactly. Because we feed the frequency of transhumanism by speaking about it, and it's like an egregore, and these take more and more and more body, become more and more present, more and more existing. So right. what world could we found to give another definition of the world that we want over than transhumanism. You know what I mean? Well, it's I think the word trans, you know, just the word itself to transcend, mm -hmm. to transform, you know, transcendental, it's really to go above something, to go beyond mm -hmm. something. When, when that's used positively, it can be very, very um, part of our evolution and very positive. When we hear things like transhumanism at a time when, again, our technology is advancing so exponentially, because we have this technology that's so advanced, and we're talking about things like AI, and without sounding very science fiction, mm -hmm. although there's so many elements to these changes that seem like we're very much headed into a science fiction reality, you know, we've got even a time where, just to bring it into more of a mainstream idea, if you will, Robotics, you know, mm -hmm. one could say from a medical point of view, robotics is a positive thing for medicine. You're going to have doctors that are going to be able to perform surgery with the help of robots. Mm. So we know that these things are inevitable. Oh, like you told me, I, did, I didn't know about... Uh, Fli Flippy. Flippy. I didn't know about this Flippy, thing. the robot Flippy that's yeah. in 100 fast food restaurants yeah. here, I think, in America. I don't know if it's in the rest of the world. <laughs> that Flippy the robot will be able to flip burgers. Better than you. Better than you. <laughs> Better, Better than, than us. us. <laughs> this, is, this is real. This is happening. And we mustn't be naive and we mustn't think, oh, that's not happening or, oh, that's too futuristic or that's too out there. there. You know. Or these are conspiracy theories, which is so yeah. overused. Yeah. Please, let's stop this nonsense. <laughs> Please, shall you we? remember like more than like 30 years ago when we had the lamb, the dolly, dolly. dolly <gasps> the sheep. The sheep. the sheep, but we have said, oh, oh, well, oh I felt so bad. I said, oh my goodness, on what slope are we going? I know, you know exactly. It like... it, well, it is, that's a great word, Yasmina, because you know why? It is a slippery slope. Yeah. When we enter into things like, and I'm all in favor of ushering in the future in ways that are conscious, 
you know, let's take our modern technology and be conscious of what we want to do with it and how do we want to use it and how do, for, do we foresee moving into the future consciously, which goes back to what you and I were talking about earlier. If we don't cultivate our awareness consciously, then things will come into play into our time that could be a slippery slope, could yeah. be very dangerous. That's when technology but, can take over. Yeah. But me, I'm always with this thing. I say, okay, God, the supreme intelligence, creates everything in the universe. It creates also that. You know what I mean? I it's do, like, I so, do. Yes. So this is also an expression, if we want, of, the of a part of side of the divine. But it's up to us, after the free will, maybe it's that, do we want that really? Is it more comfortable to be shipped and be just, you know, like controlled and following all You mean to be a supercomputer? Yes, yeah. To be a spiritual computer, oh a supercomputer? I do think that, you know, not to put it in a religious context, yeah. but into a philosophical context or an existential context, mm -hmm. if we know the power that we have and that we are very powerful beyond measure as human beings and we can create technology like artificial intelligence and we you know there is the talk about you know microchipping and all these things where some people go oh what are you talking about that's that's way too out there mm. what i propose is stop thinking that things are so out there they are in right fact there. they're right here yeah. and stop being afraid of recognizing that the world has shifted and it's changing very quickly what I, you and I got into a very profound conversation mm -hmm. earlier, which is where does consciousness come into play? Or where does the understanding of a divine union of man with something that transcends the ego? Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. that we are putting things into motion that is very ego driven? And for somebody perhaps that doesn't subscribe to religion and doesn't believe in God, well then how do we understand where there is a moral or ethical component in what we are creating and if we have to answer to anything, first we have to answer to ourselves, but that what is our conscious awareness taking responsibility for something that is bigger than us? Mm -mm. Because I, I don't think we can just look at it from an egoic point of view that it's just here we're here to serve our ego mm, mm, mm. We're, no, but, we're not here just to serve our egos yeah and and it's it put in question again the without being in religion the question of where of the supreme intelligence because if we are in a way created like they said at the image of god all of us there are different images, different sides. Well, I'm so glad you're saying that. You know, it's not? Because transhumanism is really to, to transcend the biology of our humanness mm. and to make us more like machines, to make us supercomputers. Or, you know, as Ray Kurzweil, a futurist transhumanist calls it, spiritual computers. I don't understand where the spiritual part of becoming a machine is, personally. But I do feel that if, if man plays God or considers himself God-like and creates these, you know, this technology that becomes even more powerful than we are mm. without an understanding of why do we feel a need to make ourselves more perfect. So whose image are we creating ourselves in mm. that we think that if we become a machine, we'll be more perfect, that our attributes and our traits and our characteristics can be better served if we're a machine and that as human beings, we're limited. I get that. I understand that one can go, oh, but in the future you can maybe grow a new limb and maybe we'll be able to be telepathic and maybe we'll be able to chip ourselves and because we're chipped, we'll be able to open our homes and but, our cars with our with our wrists yeah. and some people might be very excited about that yeah, it exists already to pay some people pay with their chip this is existing right but what's the point of all that because on a certain level we are supposed to be too much too many on the planet 
So now if everybody can have new limb or new kidney because we have, you know, all our own cloning thing and all, we're going to live longer. I don't see, I, there is something well, that, is that I don't grab there. Is that what we're preoccupied? Are we so afraid of death? Yes. Do we want to live eternally? I can understand that we don't want to leave this body and we want to live for as long as we can. But what are we going to do? How far do we move the goalpost? Mm -hmm to say in order for us to transcend our human limitations, we have to become like computers or like robots. Do you know, we have to become not just transhuman, we want to become post-human. Mm. We want to take ourselves beyond just the human biology that we are born with. And I, listen, we're in the future, I get that. But you know, at maybe another time when they talked about transplants, people might have had the same ethical conversation back then. Why would we intervene it's and give somebody a transplant? Mm -hmm. Is that playing God? But how far are we going to take this? Mm -hmm. How far are we going to go? Yeah, it's that. And uh, the question of transplant of organ is, it's a preoccupation for some people about the ethic way, about the spiritual way. Right. It's not something new. This is going to be even beyond because this should be created by machines or by cells of us to reproduce and to program by machine with our cell kidney or heart or something. Right. So it's it's really it can be great. But yes. where is the it's a fine line. Yeah, it's, it's bad, a fine huh? line and as we evolve I understand we're gonna evolve with our technology and we're gonna keep advancing our technology. But how are we evolving in our consciousness? Mm. We cannot not evolve in our going back to the beginning. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness being in the present moment with conscious awareness. Who am I in this moment? What am I what are my intentions in this moment? What do I want to reverberate out into the world mm. in this moment? What are my ethical and moral standards in this moment? What are my words? What are my deeds? What are my actions? In this moment, if each and every one of us took responsibility for that, mm. we'd have a much more conscious planet. So yeah, we talk about technology, Yasmina, you and I were talking a lot before. We know it's going to advance. How are we advancing mm. as conscious human beings? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. really what I'm proposing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what my book is exploring, how are we evolving in our consciousness, not just how are we evolving in our technology, we yeah. can't, they're not mutually exclusive. You can't have one without the other. We must evolve in our consciousness, mm. you know? Yeah, and uh, the line is very narrow because we could, by extrapolation, say that this is also, all this transhumanism, a manifestation of God. But maybe through this individual we create that, but maybe this is a catalyst for humans to develop something else about consciousness. You know what I mean? It's yes, like, yes. It's maybe the, the tool that is needed now uh, with all the danger that we can see coming about that. Yes. To, be, to make humans frustrated or scared, to have the idea to want something else. Right. To, to, and what is this something else? It's the thing of the new human spices and becoming mutating all the time that we don't know. Becoming eternal. But maybe it's one of the conditions, this situation is maybe of this proposal about transhumanism and ships and things. It may be one necessary condition for consciousness of humanity to evolve as well. You yes, know, it's, it's, I, so it's created by God, if we can say. Yes, you know, yes, it's, it's funny. It's by our, to, our uh, collective unconscious. Yes, for me, it's very hard to have these conversations of how we evolve mm. as a species, how we evolving in our evolution, in our humanity, without acknowledging. For me personally, I I, I respect anybody else and what guides their soul and their heart. Mm. It's very personal, but that I, it's very hard for me to have these conversations without acknowledging that there's a divine presence, that, that mm. there's some kind of union, there's something, you know, in my book, Mindfulness and Mysticism, I talked about the mystical experience, which is really going mm. beyond our animal instincts and connecting to something that's much more sacred, 
Yeah, you know, the luminous. The luminous. The, yeah, exactly. exactly. And then the, the marvelous, you know, it's right there, right there, right there in our body. So, so how do we deny this when you have so many different conflicting visions for our future? But maybe what is going on is for people to, to stimulate in them the ability to see finally the marvelous because a lot of people don't see mm -hmm. and maybe by the fear to lose that freedom or that or that they're going to start to see what is essential and to see that the marvelous is right there in simple, in simple things beautiful it's you like see? you and i well, for the last couple of days we have been mm. spending time with this beautiful ocean and i know your your friends and those that are listening with us today don't see this mm. this miraculous body of water mm. that carries itself across the globe and we have been enjoying it and if we go against the nature of the earth and we're constantly focusing on technology mm. and we're going away from the true nature of nature which aligns itself to our true yeah, nature because we are as nature so it's we are organic as nature. exactly and we don't really acknowledge it and we don't really respect it and revere it and understand it, it and have gratitude we are, it yes. can go well, we have the ocean we are like privileged if we can say but you can see this in the clouds in the sky yeah in leaves on the ground on the soil it's there everywhere so it's it's up to us to to appreciate and to relate that we are made of these elements when i see the ocean i connect of the water outside of me with the water inside of me yes. so when we have this appreciation we don't need to have more micro ships and things <laughs> we, we are just uh, i would say like ecstatic just to be alive and, really, and knowing that we're going to die. Yes. This is, this yes. is a condition and not, to be... And not letting fear dictate, you know, not to be... We lived for two, almost two and a half years collectively mm. on, on this planet with what was called a pandemic. Yeah. And yeah. that people were living at the effect of being in fear. So if you're in that unnatural state of fear, when you're in fight or flight, you know, all the time, think about it, we've been in an extended period of fear, it's unnatural. And then yeah. we look at something <laughs> like the ocean. Like we say in, in French, I don't know in English, but we dejaunt, it's like we blow a fuse, you know, it's like, <laughs> we, because it's unbearable to a point that it's it's why should we live like that? And maybe it's what is needed as well. Well, we have to ask ourselves, why do we want to live in fear? Why does fear dictate to us how we want to live our lives? And yeah. what are we most afraid of? So if we live with a virus that's being told to us 24-7 yeah. that you should be afraid because you could die, maybe we all should really be with the understanding that we're in this body, mm -hmm. which is a blessing, and that we can be in the present moment appreciating that we're alive and not constantly be obsessed with dying. Yeah. All the time. And thinking we are going to be attacked. And the virus are going to kill us. <laughs> exactly. And be in a heightened state of fear <laughs> all the time. So just be chronic, very mindful. Chronic of, fear. fear chronic, chronic fear. You know? Exactly. We can laugh. Uh, you and I can laugh. But I think each and every one of us needs to ask ourselves, what am I so afraid of? And how mm. much is fear really dominating my life and how much is fear dictating my decisions am i in a you know do i have my own personal fears and is it also being exaggerated and exacerbated by in ex external energy or used or people yeah. that are telling us we're supposed to be yeah. frightened all the time and, and we are supposed to do that and that and that i don't want yes. to do what yes. we are supposed to do yes. you know? it's, it's like yes and if you do all the things that you are told to do you will be less yeah, afraid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You might you're be gonna less... be safe and will not die <laughs> And you sleep in the stairs and it's done. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the way you can stay in your little bubble, your little reality, yeah. that you, you know, are not really addressing the topics of life. Life is about life and death. 
So be mindful of the moments that you're in and embrace them and enjoy mm -hmm. them and know that they're gifts. Yeah. Each moment is a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and we had so many gifts in two days. We did. we eat so many good things. And we did, we were enjoying life, and we were being very present. Yeah. and we talked about everything. Yeah. we didn't we didn't dance around certain subjects. We took a deep dive mm. into all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really it's do great. you know? Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> we, me too. So we're gonna do another when your book is out. I'm gonna show. Yes, you yes, I would love yeah. that. Yeah. We're gonna do that in uh, November, December. I would love yeah. that. Yes, that would be. I may come back in December, so maybe I come. You back heard back. her. She said she's coming back. <laughs> did you hear that? She's coming back in. When did you say? In December. In November. <laughs> no, I maybe. think you said November. In November. <laughs> Especially the twenty second of November. It's quite a very interesting number with eleven oh, and twenty six yes. and twenty two. That is a cosmic number, like you know, the number. Yes. So it's, uh, I guess you, you chose it on purpose. Yes, <laughs> I did. I did. Thank you for holding such beautiful space in your, what you do. You yeah, hold this you beautiful know, space we, we don't for conversation. By, we don't met by chance. We met by beauty, by love of beautiful things. Yes. You know, you, you, you wear and you are my customer and you love the shells and the, oh. and that we have and like sisters. And beautiful. Yeah. So, Very but sick. this is what connected us, beauty. But beyond that, who would tell that there is this friendship that is growing like that? I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Me too. The universe is working perfectly. You exactly. Know. And that's the thing that we, you know, look at the awareness of that. Yeah. That we acknowledge these special moments in our lives, these gifts that we are blessed with. And you know what is wonderful? Uh, it's to be able to be ourselves without filters like we are and simple. It's simple. It's flowing. You want to, oh, you want to do that? Oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's so great. Yesterday we had such a nice time doing the video and it was very windy. But it's it's magical times. It is. We play. We play like children, you know, when we do that. We, we did. We had a beautiful day. And yeah. what just came to my mind about that was that that's what's most real. We're not meant mm. to be polarized. We're not meant to be fighting and, you know, polarized over our beliefs and our opinions. We spent time together for the last couple of days being present. Yeah. And there was no polarization we weren't talking and we even, even when we talked about everything yeah. from politics to existentialism to spirituality and we met this other couple of yes. friends and they are not like us and we had such a great time as right. well yes. you know just exchanging about simple things yes you know it's and beautiful conversation yeah. and it's a time for us to really be able to have the art of discourse mm. conversations that brings us closer together, even if we have different opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we can come to, to, to know each other better. And you know, the opinion to like said to to express by words that are not the one that are used by the mainstream media. To try to find new words to express what we feel. Yes. And to to enjoy that, it's like we are creating the human spaces despite transhumanism is changing all the time we are mutating at each moment in our bodies we, we mutate since the night of time since human exists and so it, this is continuing process non-stop so we have also to find another way to express ourselves for me the common language it's about beauty love for beauty this is my my way to see it mm -hmm. you know you show a beautiful ceramics that was an unusual object of daily life of five, seven, five, six, seven years, thousand years ago. It's beauty and it was just to carry water and it's the most beautiful art. So this means that as human, we have this ability for simple things, for necess necessary objects to create beauty. And, and this is for me, if we were all doing that, if there is no place to be bored, to that. be annoyed, yes. to make wars, yes. to 
uh, be gossiping on the neighbor, yes. we have much better to do. Yes. You know? And, when, and I love that you're saying this because when, when we talk about beauty, we don't just mean superficial beauty. Oh, no, 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 no. We're talking about you, you, you could make a meal. You, you, yeah. we've been share. We've been breaking bread together mm -hmm. while we've been together, and we look at the food. And you just made some a beautiful Little lunch for us. Thing. And we, we offer this up to each other. Mm -hmm. We 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 offer the gifts. We the beauty of food, the beauty of conversation, the view, beauty of closeness, the beauty of intimacy, the beauty of your beauty doing these beautiful shawls. I'm writing the written word in my mm -hmm. books. Share the best of yourself mm. with others. Offer up your fruit. Offer up, offer up your beauty. Do you know? We each have it. Mm. Oh, yeah. And we could share it in a community. Do you yeah. know? We must stop this. We really need to be mindful of, rather than being pulled apart, and ask yourself, who is pulling us apart? Mm. This who is, is this, pulling us apart? This is a very... Most ask important. questions, Question. ask questions. Yeah. It's very important for us to ask questions of who is telling me to think this way? Who is causing me to feel polarized? And to do some research on these who. Yes. Who they are. Yes, yes. How they live. What, is their, what are the, their interests? Yeah. Uh, what are their purpose? Uh, do we want to be dictated by these people in their way of living? Right. Do, do, what are their values? What, what? This is, I think, it, I think this is the base. I think the situation as it is since more than two years is to, for us to ask us this question. Questions, Yasmina, of if we say anything people. today, is ask ourselves, who is telling me how to live? Mm. Who is telling me how to be me? Who is telling me how I should think? Who is telling me what I should do? Who is telling me what I should believe? Who is telling me what I think is the truth? Who is telling me what I think is a lie? Mm. We, we have the sovereignty, we have agency to be able to make those decisions for ourselves. So I really am a big believer in asking questions. Mm. Oh yeah. Like you just said, who are these people? We don't need a, an external authority to tell us what, what is right for us. is what I always say. I don't give advices. I give you information because I'm not in your skin. You are in your skin. And you have to ask to yourself what is important and what is right for you. Yes. And, and, and this is going to enhance, uh, stimulate and enhance your inner power. Yes. And I don't speak about ego power. I speak about really inner power to be in touch with your inner wisdom. Yeah. That we all have. Yes, we do. And we come from that planet. Yeah, and, and to and ask ourselves that. Yeah, yeah. it's and that. This is a really important time to ask questions. It's a really important time to ask ourselves, who is leading me? Am I leading myself mm. or am I being led? Mm. And if I'm being led, where am I being led to? And why am I letting myself be led by yeah. those that yeah. I think need to lead me to where they want me to go? Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Yeah, it's that. So it's a lot. You have a lot of homework to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know we, we said a lot today, didn't we? Yeah. Let's see if I have... Maybe we have some question. Maybe we can see there is something. Maybe it's too abstract what we are speaking we about. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't see any questions. Any so questions now? If you have questions, now, you can questions. you can ask things. We're gonna I'm gonna go back to see if there is something. No. Is that going forward? So or is now that coming? this is the end. So Anybody this is have now. Any questions they want to ask us? So do you have questions? No, we go. <laughs> We're going to have some sweet chocolate. Yes, so if, if you don't ask us questions, we're going to go and have some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so decide now. Uh, I think I see something. No, the request to be in the live, but we have to know about what yeah, to, to speak. And I don't know how to do that. How I, can I, we do I, with I, someone I, else? I, I don't know. I, I never know. did that. So. But maybe some questions. No. Okay. okay, so okay. you know, you can still ask questions to each of us. Aura contact is 
is also in the text, you know. They and, come uh, up too fast, so yeah. I can't. Yeah, it's very I can't hard then to. Yeah. To, yeah. And yeah, it's too fast. What's the name of the book? Uh -huh. I told you I have well, to say the same I thing. Yeah? I can't say just yet, but you'll know soon enough on November 11, 11, 11, 22. In the meantime, you can read my last book. <laughs> mindfulness and mysticism yeah it's just preparation if you want to if you really yeah. want to discover about being in the present moment and how to access the divine and what is sacred and mm. holy for you and what yasmina also mentioned the numinous that which is all around us which might not be visible but that connects us to something that we know is beyond yeah. just the physical and it's i i would venture to say I've asked a lot of people to think back to their past or maybe yesterday or maybe yeah. right now think back to a moment in your life where you felt something that you almost couldn't put into words and it was very magical and very special mm. it could have been in a dream it could have been a connection to someone that you felt something maybe connected to them in ways you couldn't even understand oh, yeah. the mystical experience is there for all of us to have mm -hmm. we just have to be open to receive it yeah yeah it's there mm -hmm. and it's fantastic yeah <laughs> i discovered late that i was a mystic if we can put a tag modern day mystics <laughs> we're all mystics in the making yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you thank you so much for listening Yes. And uh, I'm going to go back soon to my desert. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the ocean to the desert. Yeah. Thank you, Aura. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> so...